We had a mag, I mean, the biggest beer pong game you've ever seen going in our room. And Scotty Scheffler was the judge, and it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, we're back. We've got um, a maybe. We've got a maybe Kevin Kisner appearing on this show. Um, we're going to try. He's actually dislocated right now because of not dislocated like a shoulder or a hip or something like that. Dislocated physically um, because Aiken, South Carolina, doesn't have any power yet. Um, he's in Kiowa with his family. They sort of got out of there. They evacuated a little bit. And uh, there's all kinds of Wi-Fi issues. They don't have power in Aiken. He's kind of on the driving range, I think, at Kiowa. So we're going to try to have Kevin Kisner on this show. Even if he appears for a millisecond, we're going to put it in the title to entice you to listen to the show. So you may be here and have a Kevin Kisner interview coming up, and you may be here and not have a Kevin Kisner interview coming up. I'm really not sure. Uh, he's obviously a huge part of the President's Cup and all the all the chatter. He was getting the people going, so I'm excited to talk to him as always. Um, you know, we got people coming together, boys and girls. We got Yasser and Jay playing some golf together at the Dunhill Links, the old course at St. Andrews, Kings Barnes. They're out there in Scotland just yapping it up, a couple best buds playing some golf together. I saw a clip of Jay taking a swing, and it looks like they he looks like a guy they pulled out of the crowd and didn't know he was going to play golf that day. <laughs> no glove, was dressed in a weird way. And I was very confused by the whole thing. Maybe that's just how he plays. He's a he's a no glove guy. He's a Moises Salu guy. But Freddie um, yeah, mm -hmm. Freddie Boom Boom, I'll, Freddie Boom Boom as well. We'll see what happens. I feel like you know, whenever one of these meetings happens, we get a report like a day later that they're like the deal has inched forward and we are moving towards progress. So I don't know. This one's a little bit more public, a lot more public because they're just out there on a golf course together. Um, I don't know. I these updates really don't move me anymore i don't know what's going to happen but they are certainly on the same golf course and we will see if anything happens yeah i mean i feel like um there's been a lot of meetings there's been people there's been people flying helicopters to golf courses and they've been doing meetings inside clubhouses i think this is the best way to get a, a deal done you know you go out there you play some iconic golf you play some historic golf courses the vibes are high um, you're hitting some good shots. You're at the old course, you know, like this is where things are going to get done. I don't know who this benefits. I feel like it probably benefits Yasser because it's like he can just dominate any sort of conversation, any sort of uh, situation out there. Um, it seems like he's just kind of tagging, like he's got, um, he's got Monaghan just kind of tagging along his cool golf trip and he's just going to be like one of the extras. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I do think that this is a better scenario than any other scenario. This is better than a Zoom call. This is better than a meeting in New York City. You're going out to an iconic golf course. You're going to get some shit done. You're going to talk about some shit. I want to see Yasser. I feel like we never see Yasser. Jay, we see he's a ghost at the Creator Classic. He's floating around East Lake. Yasser, we hear so much about. We obviously saw them on whatever cable news channel that was sitting there together. But we hear a lot about Yasser. We hear about how powerful he is. But being able to actually see him and see him swing a golf club, I'm very interested in that. Like, are they going to allow cameras on him? I was wondering about this guy's security situation. Because, yeah. I mean, you're out there. Everybody knows what golf, you know, like you're saying, Trent. He's kind of a, does a good job of being incredibly relevant and powerful and never seen. You know, we hear a month later, there's a tale about he hosted some party during an event on his yacht. And DJ was there. Phil was there. Everybody was there. Or Tiger is flying up to New York on the jet. And him and Jay last week met with Yasser. But that motherfucker's gone. Now they're telling people, hey, man, Old Course St. Andrews, Carnoustie, Kings Barnes, five hours each day. This is where this guy's going to be. And they're outdoor, outdoor facility, golf course, probably a lot of angles of attack. This guy and his crew and their history, as has been well documented in the golf world over the last several years, probably got some enemies out there, you know, probably worked up a few people that would like to see bad things happen. He's got to have crazy fucking security out there. And that combined with the power this guy's got, he's got Jay on a puppet string. You know, it's like when you're dealing with this guy and you're just Monahan and everybody's shitting on you back home and he's one of the least popular kind of leaders in America ever since they announced the deal and coming together and him backtracking. And then he goes into any meeting scenario, even the golf 
with Yasser, who's probably, he rolls up with like eight bulletproof Escalades and he's got snipers and all the towers and he's got a $700 billion fund behind him. He's running a Premier League team. He's running leagues all over the place. He just fucking dominates Jay, man. Like, you know, like there's no way in those conversations it's not over before it even starts with this guy. Dominates. Dominates. I want to see him play golf, though. There's nothing better than you get some real powerful, like those uh, Peyton Manning clips from a month or so ago when they were at um, out in Colorado. <laughs> he kind of had the little lunge yips going with his chips. Seeing really impressive, powerful, successful men out there struggling with the game of golf. Just it it just brings it brings everything level, and I would not mind to see a couple of clips of Yasser out there. But I don't know if he's going to let those clips out. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing super public golf courses, I feel like people are just going to take videos of them unless they have the whole place sweeped. Right, like Yasser blade. Like, do you want to be the guy that tweets out the video of Yasser blading a chip nope. across the into the no. fucking old course hotel? You know, I don't think you want to be that guy. This episode is presented by our great sponsor and friend and American company, Chevy. The Equinox EV helps you get the distance you're looking for with an available EPA estimated 319 miles of range on a full charge. Actual range may vary based on several factors. The Equinox EV offers a best-in-class 17.7-inch diagonal standard touch screen display. This thing's awesome. We love the Equinox EV. The Chevy Bowtie. It's as American as it gets. And now the fact that they're going into the EVs, they've been doing the EVs. We've been partners and sponsors. They've been our sponsor for a long time now. The fact that we've been talking about these new EVs for this long just shows you how good that they are at making them and how you know they've been in this game for a long time. Two years ago, we were talking about how they were 10 years in the game. So they know what they're doing. The EVs are great. The, the, the huge infotainment systems on the inside, I'm a huge fan of them. Anything electric at this point. The insides are incredible. The interiors are beautiful. So make sure you go check it out on the website. Build your own trim. Figure it all out. All the colors, all the interiors, all the rims. It's an amazing time to be alive. The uh, the 2025 Equinox EV LT has a starting price around $34,995. Your pricing may vary as dealers set the final price. The Equinox EV offers a roomy, no compromises interior with ample cargo room and convenient storage solutions. The Equinox EV accommodates with uh, comfortable seating for up to five people. Head on over to Chevy.com slash Equinox EV to check out product info, lease offers, and amazing deals. Chevrolet, together, let's drive. Also, just a crazy time for Jay Monahan to be just dealing with like a Saudi Arabian like regime and shit. You know, it's like feels like the world's going into into World War Three right now. The Middle East is like as hot as it's ever been. And you're just like you're out there just golfing, trying to come up with a fucking a new golf league. And you're you're with a pretty powerful, you know, nasty dude out there. You know, like this is Jay Monahan. We've said this for years. Just didn't sign up for this shit. <laughs> you know, he just didn't sign up for this shit. He doesn't know what he's getting into. No, no. I mean, you're right. It, it's um, it's supposed to be a ceremonial gig kind of to a degree, yeah. right? You just push keep kicking that can down the road man you know and like these sponsors are coming in you got ceos of banks that are like we'll pay you 15 million dollars a week just so that we can sit in that hospitality tent and play in the pro-am and you guys just keep doing what you're doing pga tour and now fuck iran is sending missiles at israel we're intercepting them hezbollah is getting assassinated and you're out there with this guy that is boys with the guy that runs Saudi Arabia it's playing crazy. golf at St. Andrews being it's crazy. Like, Can we do a deal, dude? Can we do a fucking deal? It's He's just not- like, I want to I want to get this golf thing going. You know, we got a pretty good deal going on here in America. I want to just get this golf thing going on. You're coming in here trying to take the whole thing from me. Just <laughs> let's get a deal done cuz I don't know what's coming next. I don't know what I don't know what your affiliation is with what's going on out there. I don't want any part of it. I don't want any part of it. I didn't sign up to be a fucking world, you know, geopolitics fucking leader out here. I'm not trying to be, you know. I mean, at some point, like they might use Jay Monahan to like to like get information for the United States. You know what I mean? Like this guy's just signed up for way more than he actually expected. <laughs> He's a mole. He's like a double spy for there's for a chance that like the United States government, like asks him to like debrief them on you know 
on like what's going on like behind yeah. the scenes of like has has he gotten any information from anything you know what i mean like you just don't know like you like i said you're dealing with some fucking serious fucking mamma jammas i would retire so fast if i were jay monahan i just be, retire. I don't, even though people even if people like threatened you they're like you can't retire because such such and such we're waiting for the next guy you got to take the arrows i at a certain point i would just scream cry <laughs> and retire just retire Bro. man he tried to retire like a year ago. <laughs> he just disappeared and was like, I'm fucking done. Oh, yeah. And they grabbed his ass by his an anxiety attack. Like, nope, that? you're fucking back. Dude. You're going up there until someone shoots you to death. You know, I don't know what they're waiting for, but that poor guy, he tried, man. He tried to leave. The most believable attack. scenario for someone to have a panic attack. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that. I, I complete that whole story. I believe the whole thing because <laughs> it's what Frankie's saying. You are, you become a, you're engrossed in and entrenched in geopolitics. And you're like, I just wanted to like sit on CBS on Sunday morning, and talk to Jim Nance and be like, yeah, you know, everything looks pretty good so far. You know, we're going to keep the tour going. The guys seem happy. Money's coming in. People are watching. And instead it, yeah, it really has exploded into something. And to the point where like the biggest golf news of the last six months is him being on the same golf course as Yasser. And it's like his just, biggest his biggest struggle should have been where do they want to place the umbrella in the water at the Travelers Championship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like right. that like that was that was the role of the PG Tour commissioner prior to you know the Middle East getting involved. <laughs> you know, like this is <laughs> now he's got to fly on private planes and take his shoes off and like there's just like weird shit that's got to go on with Jay Monahan now. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's bizarre. It's a bizarre world that he's now completely just in. He's so in it right now, just drenched in in drama. So much. This guy's got to age. Like they talk about be presidents aging. You know, like this is being the fucking commissioner of the PGA Tour ages you. Wow, like milk. Dude, he used to like his whole year would have been based around a big announcement about how they're going to do player interviews in the middle yeah. of a round this year oh, yeah. and that's going to be the main launch they've been working on this initiative for a couple of years and now the main launch is like he's got to get on yasser's jet before those missiles catch up to him when they're fucking leaving <laughs> some meeting in ria because these countries are all at war with each other i feel i mean we've said it we, i feel bad for the for the poor bastard you know he really he really didn't see the belmont massachusetts guy you know, he's working at the tour and everything's going to be roses. You move up the ladder. And like we said, you just kind of keep these sponsorships going. That's how hard can that be for 10 or 15 years? You got Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. You got these new guys coming up that are going to be great. And now it's just fucking chaos out there. But, you know, it is interesting to see the two of them out there. Yasser being in the, in the public sphere is kind of all he wanted, I think. Right. He's like playing the old course at St. Andrews now in an event, being paired up with the commissioner of the PGA Tour. He's with this, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Burmeester guy. And um, Jay's playing with Billy Ho, which I like to see. I'd like to get a little debrief from Billy Ho at some point. I feel like he's one of our guys. I'd like to get a nice little, some feedback from him on what that was like. Because I think he's, I think he's more in there than, than we maybe give Billy Ho some credit for. And I'm interested to see that dynamic too. Because Billy Ho has been a guy over the last couple of years who he's gotten a little chippy. Yeah. When it comes to talking about the live guys and whatnot, oh, yeah. and how he's playing in a group with uh, with the Oscar. So, um, what a great event that is! By the way, I wish I wish it was a little bit, I don't know, somewhere else on the schedule, or you could you were a little bit more hyped up about it because they do they play the old course, play Carnoustie, they play Kings Barns, which is like the Pebble Beach of Scotland on the water right there. It's sick, and Rory's playing. He plays in a lot. I think he plays with like his old man maybe or something, and. um I saw Brooks Kepka's playing in it, so you got quite the crowd. Tiger of loves Malar. this event, doesn't he? I don't know if Tiger played it. Did he play? Doesn't in the Tiger like love this guy? Wasn't this like part of the reason people were saying that like he may, he may like captain that's a the different next Ryder Cup team? I think that's a different pro am. I think that's the um. Oh oh oh! I JP see. Yeah, McManus yeah. one. McManus yeah. one. You got know it. what I'm saying? But you're right. That's the reason a lot of because I saw some of those tweets too that got they're it. saving Tiger Woods as president or captaincy for presidency he maybe should Got be president it. uh captaincy for whenever they do the thing at Adair manor but um i saw shout out to our guys peter millar i saw uh them posted a bunch of stuff because they've got i think they're one of the main apparel sponsors of the event they got a bunch of their players rocking some nice jackets and like mm. peter millar 
fall stuff going into like the fucking whatever it was the banquet last night people look sharp out there great i mean now that they're going with the crown on the chest i'm telling you we we just we talked about this yes uh on the last show but when we got our fall kind of shipment in of peter millar stuff i it's amazing how far they've come for like what i've wanted out of peter millar because in the beginning amazing clothes super super comfortable but you never really knew it was peter, <clears throat> peter millar you had to look at the back of the you had to look at your tag essentially everything was kind of like hidden and now you want that crown on the chest you want to show it off like that like what you're wearing right now looks out of control good yep, like that clean. is it's an amazing amazing logo like i've always said it's the best logo in golf apparel you got to just throw it out there the crown baby but yeah i saw um, a bunch of people look good so that event um you know hopefully goes off well and I'm looking forward to highlights. Hopefully, Rory. Imagine Rory. This will be like the one Rory wins at the old course when he couldn't quite win the Open there. Um, do you guys see this uh, this tweet going a little bit viral of um, this Mike Clayton fella chirping the people for uh, taking carts at his at this this golf course? This tweet is kind of getting posted everywhere, but he tweeted out a picture of oh, I saw this four guys on like the first tee. One guy was teeing up his golf ball, and he he uh, wrote on his tweet on x one of the go- one of golf's great crimes an easily walkable course and four under 25 year olds in carts makes me want to throw up i was trying to look at this tweet and it turns out this mike clayton golf fella has me blocked i couldn't even look at the tweet <laughs> on twitter i think maybe from our spat with um old man golf media is maybe when he began to block me because i think he's an aussie fella and we were in Australia. We were getting into it with that one curmudgeon guy from Australia. And I think he might have blocked me from that. But then I saw, like, this iron golf and a bunch of places reposted it. Brad Faxon, quote, tweeted it and wrote, um, he wrote, isn't the way he's teeing it up the ball, teeing up the ball, Mike Clayton Golf, a hint what you're dealing with? So he was chirping these guys, too. And, boy, has that not gone the right way for them. And they are just getting roasted for being pompous. Pop as fucks about this. So I'm I'm on Mike Clayton's Twitter right now. I am right not now. blocked. Thank you for allowing me to see these tweets, nice. Michael Clayton. Um, the first thing in his bio says golf architecture. So that's kind of who we're dealing with on this side of it. I don't mm-hmm. understand. I never. I will always be on the side of just let people do whatever they want. If they're really not bothering you, if oh, you're just shit. taking pictures of Pete, like, oh, you're blocked. <laughs> uh, shit. What the wow. fuck? How Trent? come Trent's good? I you somehow were got feisty through. during that whole battle, Trent. I was. I was feisty, but. I, I told just, Jeff Shackelford to what fuck a fucking off loser. <laughs> there you go. There's Frank. You got Frankie riled up now that he's blocked. <laughs> I, it's, whenever Good. you're taking pictures of just people who are playing golf, like let them be. If they're not ruining, if they're not driving on the green, if they're not driving on the tee boxes, if they don't have a shovel out there and they're just digging up the golf course for no reason, leave these people alone. They're playing the sport that you love. You you claim to love this sport so much that in your whole bio on Twitter is golf related. And then you see people playing golf, enjoying themselves, however they want to do it, well within the bounds of whatever the golf course allows, and you decide to shit all over them. You don't actually love the sport. You love the sport that, in your, from your perspective. The only way that you can – it's the same thing with old man media that we deal with in Australia. People at that point only want people to enjoy golf the way that they enjoy golf, but that is not how it works. If you people, people enjoy golf in a bunch of different ways. Not just the way where, oh, I want to walk. It's a walkable course. Oh, this this golf architecture is so beautiful. I love it. If not everyone <laughs> loves it that way, some people just want to go out there and play golf. And if they're doing that and they're not hurting anybody, then fuck you for le- not letting them enjoy it the way that they want to. Just like what an absolute fucking low life loser to care about any of this stuff. Just an crazy. absolute low life loser. How have you gotten? How have you gotten through life this way? You know, you're an old man that needs to go into a home. You've got one life to live. What am I going to You're on your you're on the 17th hole of life. Like you are coming. You can see the clubhouse. Damn, it's right? over. 17. You can see the clubhouse, man. Mike Clayton. Like that clubhouse is showing up. You are. You've made the turn years ago. And how have you gotten this far on that golf course without just like adjusting your views on on life you know like maybe that was the way you viewed the game of golf in life 45 years ago how have you gotten through this life without adapting this is like this is what's great about the world is that like there's new versions of doing things we adapt we grow we we expand things it's not so secluded 
it's not so inclusive, exclusive. It's more inclusive. You know, it's that's yeah. what's great about this game. After COVID, people during COVID, people went out and they and they got outside and they learned how to play golf and they went and bought golf clubs and and golf course manufacturing uh, golf manufacturing companies exploded and all of these new equipment came into play and now like TV deals are bigger and there's a new golf league. Like things are just getting bigger and younger kids are 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 are, are enjoying their time playing the game. And if they want to take a goddamn golf cart, how is that a bad thing? You know, fuck you, Michael Clayton. Also, the other how, guy, Michael Clayton, the guy that used that was for ESPN. Didn't he? Pa- did, did he? Pass John away? Clayton. I John Clayton. Um, mm. You're not even like the best Clayton out there. There's so many better Claytons than you. <laughs> I, they would rather also, see their sport die being played the way that they play it sport. as opposed to growing in a different way. And that's Michael, the, Michael the way Clayton it always is with those guys. About and they're golf. fucking insane. He owns nothing in the game of golf. He, this is not his sport. That's he, right. It's also he's more, never gotten himself to a position to speak on anything for the sport as if he owns the sport. It's also more those guys sport now than it is his sport. That's Correct. who's playing golf. That's who's driving the revenue. Right. That's why the golf carts exist. Those guys are not only taking golf carts, Mike Clayton golf, who's got us blocked, but dude, oh, they're putting a speaker me. with a big magnet right on the, right on the pole there on their cart. They're loading that cooler up with like eight Trulies. It could probably mm-hmm. only fit six of them, and they're going to have themselves a fucking day, and that's great. It's great for them. It's great for golf. You can enjoy it your way. It's also just, it's way too late to be upset about the cart thing. Golf carts have been around for like 90 years, you know? <laughs> what are you upset about golf carts now? They've been doing golf carts forever. There's that iconic picture of uh, Sinatra in like a golf cart, and they're like the where everybody was posting that like a month ago of how they invented the beverage cart because they refused to play golf without drinking. And they were like, how are we going to get drinks once we're out on the golf course? And they were like, we're going to pay someone to drive around and follow us in a cart with booze so we could drink on the golf course. And that was, what, in the 50s or something? So we're talking. You're way behind on this thing. So that got people riled up. I also just can't even imagine the image of this motherfucker walking up to the first tee, seething, that there were people in front of him in golf carts so much so that he had to take a picture and tweet it out, being oh like, ha, oh. people aren't going to believe these guys. Are he can't even walk. Carts. This guy probably has two knee replacements. He's got a hip on the way out. You're telling me that this guy, you know what's great? Is this guy wants to take a cart so badly, but it's against <laughs> everything that he stands for. Yep. His knees kill him. His wife just begs him to stop walking the golf course because she hates what it's doing to his turf toe. You know, like he gets back and he's it takes him 35 minutes to adhere to to all the wounds on his toes and his ankles. And he's got to sit there and his wife's got to give him a foot massage. And she's sick of it. Just take a cart. Mike. Dude, also ironic that he's using Twitter. The, the, you're the, you're voicing this opinion on an app that you otherwise would probably criticize as what the young whippersnappers are doing. So you're the vehicle that you're using to complain is of the generation that you're complaining about. Fuck this guy. Fuck Michael Clayton, man. You know, Fuck him. probably a nice Absolutely. guy. I don't probably. know. Maybe he is, but his golf takes make me really angry. And you know what? I, shame on Brad Faxon, a guy I like, uh, a guy I like on TV. He's, you know, I, I like watching him. I like listening to him and like, oh, the way that guy's putting the ball on the tee, that's your first mistake. Like, bro, why do you guys care so much? Why? That shit also, sucks. Everyone did a carbon copy of like what the correct way to play golf was. It would just stay in the 1910s. That's what they want, Frankie. I do huh? think that's that's what that's they sort want. Of what they that's what they want yeah. without admitting that's what they want. Right. You know, they want the courses to be like right. They want all the courses to be only the courses that were designed in the year 1900 or within like a 20 year give or take on either side. They want it to only be walking. They want all the old school golf bags balls persimmon woods they just they want golf to have never ever evolved at any point these guys probably just hate tiger woods you know they're like what is going on now you know how is this how is this happening (laughs) you know just this is not this is not good some like fucked up hate of tiger woods too that they just can't say and they're just like like they're they're again seething about all of it playing their music wearing their wearing all their vibrant colors get them off just Get them out of here. <laughs> uh, just, uh, putting their T's in the ground. 
fucking just steaming mad on T-Box. Fuck! <laughs> They're driving motor vehicles on the car on the golf course, ruining the agronomy. Fuck! Shit! Fucking hate this shit. Just hit your wedge. I fucking hate this guy so much. It's crazy that these <laughs> what people are we exist. Doing man, if that guy said that to me, I I would give him the 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 most just fucked up. Like like what? If he was like, why are you driving a golf cart right now? I would ask him if he's the dumbest person alive. It's also just fun, dude. Driving a golf cart is fun <laughs> as fuck. It's what made me fall in love with the game of golf? I said, I said that at Eisenhower Red uh, when we did Breaking Eighty Five. There was something about. Like that fog that kind of just rose in the morning and all the golf carts were in the little barn at Eisenhower and they would drive it out and that motor sound and that gas smell would hit you. I was like 11 years old. I'm like, I can't believe we get to get in this thing. We're driving go-karts playing a sport. Like this is the coolest (laughs) fucking thing ever. I can't believe my dad took me here. And then he'd be like, you want to drive? And like on the second hole, we'd switch our bags. Because I wasn't allowed to drive it like from the golf cart barn. And then like I would get out there and I would hit the gas. And you're like, oh my God, this thing is moving as I push down this pedal. I have control of this thing. It's the coolest fucking thing of all time. The nice thing is is that not everybody of that generation is like that. Like my dad is 73 years old, literally just had a knee replaced last year. And he's like, we we can only go into places that have golf carts. That's Mm -hmm. it. Well, you love it. You can play music out there with Gary Ryan. He doesn't care. It's just it's so it's not everybody. I don't want right. to generalize the that whole age group, but there are a couple in there who are like, don't take a cart, don't play music, and just walk the course. I'm having a big but senior on Sunday. The only like reason um, there's many reasons we picked it because it's an amazing golf course. It's an amazing golf resort. But one of the main reasons, which is great on them, is they allow golf carts at their golf courses. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these golf resorts like sand valley and bandon dunes they are grinds like they're great we love them we've done videos at them we had some of the best memories we've ever had at these places but we're also younger golf sickos that will go anywhere we'll walk any golf course and we love that we'll we'll do anything that comes our way in in terms of golf but there are people that like you need a golf cart like you're saying my dad wouldn't be going on this golf trip if big Cedar didn't have golf carts there's no way he'd be like have fun i'll see you guys when you get back but now I get to enjoy that with him. Michael Clayton doesn't like that. Does Michael Clayton hate my dad? He does. does anti- Michael Clayton uh, like does he hate people that like survivors of heart of heart surgeries? Is he like how how deep does this go? Does he hate handicapped people? Does Michael Clayton not want handicapped people to play the game of golf? He is pro heart disease. I what know about, that. He's rooting does Michael for Clayton, cardiovascular issues. Does Michael Clayton hate like wounded warriors, veterans? Does Michael Clayton hate veterans? America, how deep Feels does like this go? It's a good question. A lot of what if you got your leg cards. blown off in, in war and you want to go play a game of golf and you have to take a golf cart to get from T box? Does Michael Clayton hate that? He would say you need to walk or you should <laughs> be playing crazy. golf. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree. Walk does he up, hate man. blind people or like you know, anyone that you know? Like you got to think that that really good blind golfer t- probably has someone drive him in a cart, right? Like does he does he not want him to? I was gonna say, hopefully the blind person is not driving the cart. Right, but he's got to probably take. It's probably easier for him to get driven in a cart. But I, I don't but know yeah, where I was going with, with that somebody one. who could drive the cart. No, yep. I agree because I think if they're just walking around, blind in the golf <laughs> no. course, there's we got to I mean, play that guy. By the way, that's with, like six years blind. in the making. We got to play that blind golfer because he will beat us, and he's blind, can't see anything. It's like a two handicap or something. He's is incredible. I think he's really good. He's incredible. You got people on YouTube playing like five year olds and shit. We got to play the blind guy. We got to play the blind guy. You can do whatever you want, apparently. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Michael Clayton, that's that George Clooney movie. I just looked that up. That's what's bothering me. I knew Michael Clayton sounded Mm. familiar. What George Clooney Clooney movie? Michael Clayton. Oh, no, I've never seen it. 2007. The name is Michael Clayton of the movie? Yes, sir. Actually, I think I have seen that. I tried to watch Heat the other day, and I couldn't get into it. What do you mean? I don't know. Maybe I was in the wrong mood. I've never seen Heat. I know. It's crazy. I know. Incredible cast. Oh my De Niro, God. Pacino, the whole deal. I just couldn't get into it. I think I was just in the wrong mood. Okay. The, the, it was too much. Like the first scene, like guys getting shot in the head. I'm like, this is too much for me. And they're screaming. It felt like they were overacting. He's like, yeah, I got to be here tomorrow. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, I turned it off. I'm like, I literally went like this. I went, okay. And I just fucking, I walked upstairs. I said, I, I'm done with heat. I'm going to put on Despicable Me. Like, I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I couldn't Not do it. Not for you. That's okay.
Summer is all about the freedom to have fun. You don't have to blow your budget, go on some crazy trip. You can forget having and be forced into some vacation because you could take a tequila vacation with the new Truly Tequila Sodas. Been loving these things all year long out of the Barstool Classic. We've done all 25 stops now. Signed, sealed, delivered, stamp of approval for the Truly Tequila Sodas. They got the refreshing blend of real fruit juice from Concentrate, sparkling water, and premium tequila blanco. It's the drink of the summer. These things are just beloved right now, boys. Phenomenal. Um, I got my father-in-law hooked on them now. I mean, he went to a Barstool Classic, played in it, and then now showed up for Sunday football last week a little cooler. I put him on the recliner downstairs, and he had the cooler next to him. I said, oh, what'd you bring today? And he had just a bunch of truly tequila sodas. He's a man of habit. He's a creature of habit. He, he started to drink them. Now he can't stop. He cannot stop with these truly tequila sodas. It's his favorite new drink. Um, you know, he's just a real, real big fan of them. And that's what happens. You go to a Barstool Classic. We have them by the plenty. We've got a ton of Trulies out there. You have four or five of them. You have a great time. And then you just can't stop thinking about them. Your next time getting alcoholic beverages when you're at the store, you're like, I got to find those Trulies again. I had a great time on the golf course. They are so refreshing. They're so tasty that I have to grab more. And that's what happened. It, the product placement and like advertising worked to a T for Don, my father-in-law. That stuff works, it turns out. It's you know amazing. I mean? It really does work. They got all four refreshing flavors, lime, pineapple, guava, grapefruit, and watermelon, all with 5% ABV and just 100 calories. Truly tequila soda. Keep it light. Hard seltzer beverage company, Boston, Massachusetts. Please drink responsibly. I think Kiz is ready, by the way. Nice shirt. What up? Well, I only have uh, shirts from the President's Cup because I haven't been home, bud. No, I we're like saying it. you look good. Yeah. I like the shirt. I think you look sharp. I was just doing my uh, laundry, and I'm like, well, I guess everybody that I see is going to know that I'm really a Team USA guy this week because I'm going like, to continue to wear the same clothes. Or you, you could be shirtless, and they probably feel the same way. They'd be like, there's that shirtless guy. And look at that sexy, handsome guy. What's up, Trent? I only see, see you on there. I only see dumb, dumb Frankie and Riggs. <laughs> Are you sideways? How do you get? How do you get yourself not sideways? I right thought now? it told me to go that way. No, let me go that way. Wow! There you go. Yeah, you look phenomenal. That's man. better. Hey, you do look. Look at this. Do I'm doing this at? Whoa! That's beautiful. Yeah. You're you Kiwa, yeah. Yeah, sick. Y'all ever been here? Yeah. I'm at the River Club. I got some Wi-Fi on this porch for you. You're the man. Kids, you look phenomenal, oh. man. You know, I hadn't seen you in forever. I thought you were going to come on here. I mean, obviously, we saw you at the President's Cup, and we've been—I didn't see you, but we saw you on all the footage. You saw your tits out, um, but I, you know, I hadn't seen your face in a while. You're looking good. You're looking young. You're looking spry. I don't know look. about all that. I think the camera's doing that for me. Yeah, you got a filter on or something? Look at you. You don't have—you don't have a wrinkle on you. <laughs> oh, I got plenty of wrinkles and plenty of gray hairs. I'm just covering them up with this hat. <laughs> man uh, yeah, i didn't think i'd be seeing your nipples uh go viral but that was that was a fun that was a fun time man yeah it was kind of a weird deal because i wasn't with him when he made it so then i had to figure out a time to do it and i didn't think like when he made the last putt on the last group of the president's cup i should run out with my shirt off <laughs> on tv so one of the one of the very rare times i made a proper decision and not a poor decision i agree with that maybe because you were drinking more waters than you were beers that time and i was probably just so tired by the end of it i was like i'm not I'm not, uh, I got to use my last bit of wits I have. I don't know if anybody had a more fun President's Cup than you did. Man, I had a ball, but I would tell you it was a lot of long hours, longer than I expected. Uh, but it was so much fun to be with the guys. You know, we, we basically put players first and whatever they needed. So once we got them taken care of, then the captains hung out for a while. So every night, Jim liked to decompress and have a few beers at the back of the team room, talk about our next steps. And, uh, you know, that turned into 11, 1130 every night. And then you're back up at 5 a.m. every day, ready to roll again to get the first guys back to the course. So not a lot of sleep, lots of headaches, and uh, lots of excitement. Is it hectic in between sessions trying to get the next session out? If I would have been asked to be the captain, having no experience this year, we would have got beat. Really? Wow. wow. Yeah. So there's that many important decisions going on that you think directly correlate with a win that you I mean, like not having experience. prepared, showing your guys you're prepared, being calm and, and total urgency at all times. I mean, think about it. When the last putt's made, we have 45 minutes to put the next picks out. By the time we get all the guys back to the team room, get them settled in, we walk into the room, and then we got to get in the car and go back to the media center to do it. We have about 20, 25 minutes to literally sit out and go, are we still going with the plan every night? 
and it really gets uh it got hectic you know after we get smushed oh and five on friday everybody likes to panic right like oh shit we need to change our whole plan for saturday and jim i think was such a constant guy in the room and he's like look i've been through this i'm prepared this is what we do we stick to the plan we showcase the guys that were calm in adversity and we they know when they're playing we've already told them when we're playing they know who they're playing with if we change everything it changes the entire outlook of the team and i was just so impressed by the way jim handled it i think jim had a ton of experience from getting his ass beat in, in paris and felt like he was unprepared for the sessions like that like he he did not have a game plan from session to session and how fast it goes. And, uh, you know, it's so easy with six guys and six opinions to get off the beaten path. And he always talked about, you know, he let us run for five or eight minutes. And then he'd be like, all right, everybody come back to here. Funnel, big funnel, let's get back to the tunnel and uh, make our decisions. And then we would be excited about the next session. And, and I thought Saturday morning was the session of the, of the matches. You know, our guys kind of got their ass whipped, got a little humble pie. Uh, had to get up at 4 a.m. to get back out there after a long day Friday and then have an hour delay on top of that, knowing that all the pressure seemed to be on us because we're the heavy favorites and now we just got our butts kicked. And Jim put us put the sign by the door walking to the range and it said, we apply the pressure. And I thought that was a great, great slogan for the guys to see walking out and, and they went out and responded. I, uh, I'm, I'm very fascinated in understanding that rush after a session of then putting people out because i heard Burek kind of talked about it afterwards as well jim was talking all kinds about like i was just prepared this time and i wasn't prepared last time and i think that's so underrated because even me as a fan media member whatever the hell we are it's like the last minute matches finish up i'm trying to you're trying to get tweets out or you're texting with your buddies about like fuck that was i can't believe we went on fire whatever and then by the time i look I already get a notification that like the matchups for the next day. And like you're saying to have to factor in who played well, who didn't play well, who vibed together. Does there need to be a change? They got to get input from Stuart Sink's pod and crew from you and then make all those calls. I can see how that would be insanely hectic. And then you also the pageantry of it. You got to go sit in the media center. You got to like deliver it in the right well, way you, you also don't know the matchups right so we gotta we have no idea who they're putting where and we've got matchups right. we like and so we right. have to post and they have to match then they have to post and we have to match so that's all another but the the unsung heroes of that entire process are those scouts we called them nerds when i played and i always like these nerds like they know more than us this is incredible but after being on the other side like there's no chance i would ever be a captain without those nerds being on my team because they literally keep us calm. Like, hey, man, you guys had the right pairings out on Friday. You just got your ass beat. They literally played as good an alternate shot as they did in best ball, which is unheard of. So, like, you ran into a buzzsaw. Don't freak out. We have the right game plan. Let's keep with our plan. We had the pairings. Basically, two weeks before we got there, we had already told the guys who they were playing with, what session they were playing, and pretty close to where in the session they were going to go depending on matchups. Wow. So everyone felt good about it. And so if you go in there after you get your ass beat and you go, we got to change everything. And then we walk out to our team room and go, you're sitting now, Scotty Scheffler. And Pat, you and Xander got your ass beat. So you're out. You know, that changes the whole dynamic of the team. So having those scouts to put it back into reference, like, hey, man, y'all just didn't, y'all just got beat. They played better than y'all. Made us feel really good about sticking with the game plan. And then that shows calm in the face of adversity to the team. Yeah, that's interesting because in other sports, there's always that argument where it's like you could play really well, but there's another team that's just played better. And it doesn't mean that you should go back and trade every single player that you have. It's just like you there's winning and there's losing in sports and the other team's getting paid to play that same sport and assume to win. So that might just happen from time to time. Here's um, a crazy how, stat real quick, Frankie, about their play on Thursday. They were 27 under in five matches in best ball. And most of them went late into the round, right? Like 16, yep. 17, 18. In alternate shot, the internationals were 23 under mm. in the same matches, but they played like nine less holes too. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they ended seven so and six and six and five. And so, like, we're sitting there in the team room, like, holy shit, they're better at alternate shot than they are at best ball, which is completely unheard of. And they almost <laughs> did it again on Saturday. They played unbelievable on Saturday. How vocal are the are, are any of the players like vocal about <clears throat> like coming off the golf course and being like I want to switch it up and like do you guys have to take that into account or are you guys just sticking with the plan 
and they're like just going with the flow. Well, obviously, after you get your ass beat, and and we basically told the guys who was hitting on evens and who was hitting on odds based on stats, right? So we basically said, here's your mat, here's your teammate, and you're hitting the evens. So on Friday when we lost, we had a couple guys be like, I think we need to switch up the odds and the evens, like immediately after. And so we we relay that back to the scouts. Scouts run their data, show us you know why they're on odds and evens, and then we present it back to them. And it's it's like everything else. As soon as you shoot seventy four, you know you want to go change your putting sort stroke and your golf swing. You shoot sixty five the next day, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm good. So once once they calm down, like Xander and Pat wanted to switch, and we we're like, dude, it's basically the same either way with y'all's game. It doesn't matter if y'all want to switch. We'll leave it up to you. So I'm looking up there on the board on Saturday, and they should play it right back to what we told them they should do. <laughs> they didn't even switch. So it's always like, hey man, you sleep on it a little bit, and everything kind of prevails in the cooler heads. These matchups, because it is different than the Ryder Cup. Uh, in the Ryder Cup, you just post the lineup. They fall how they fall. This one, you get to actually match people. What determines a good matchup? Because I think the inherent thought is like, if our guys are just better than your guys, then we're just going to put our, our, our guys out. It doesn't matter who they match up. You were kind of saying that it, it obviously can tweak the order you're going to put people in based on the matchup. How do you determine what's a good matchup? Well, first of all, you have guys tell you people they want to play, which is always a good thing in my mind. Like if it's, uh, you know, Xander wants to play Jason Day, that's great. You know, go play him. I- I'll never forget Justin Thomas telling me years ago in the President's Cup he wanted to play Hideki because he felt like he always beat Hideki when they played together. So we put them together and Hideki shot eight under on the front nine. I'm like, how'd that work out for you, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we kind of use that. And then we, so the biggest thing that I learned is, in those in the team part of it, like the two mans, when you have a ten man group like Thursday and Friday, and then you go down to an eight man group on Saturday, you don't want you want to spread the wealth, right? So you don't want to put necessarily Scotty Scheffler and Xander Shoffley together because in turn you might have to put your two lower players together, which makes the overall you're just splitting the points. Whereas if you can put Xander and a lower player and Scotty, you know, we said Russell Henley, everybody's like, why'd you play him with him? I'm like, well, they're the perfect freaking team, like Russell is a robot, hits it down the middle, nothing phases him. Scotty's going to hit every iron shot close, and Russell can putt. It's like an unbelievable team for those two. So those are the biggest things I've learned. I always, like, from a player, was like, why don't we put Tiger and Phil together every time? Or, you know, they're our best players. They're going to win every time. But it, it's much better to, you know, get all of your percentiles in the 90% of your team, and that way your your best 10 guys are on the course all playing together. So funny, I'm going on like a buddy's trip to Big Cedar and we're doing a Ryder Cup and like I'm one of the captains and it's funny to like I'm trying to pair up exactly what you just said where it's like, oh, I could just send off me and my buddy Kyle and we'll we'll go four and oh. But like I think I might play with like my dad one day because I have a better chance of winning playing with him and then Kyle has a better chance of winning at the bottom right. of the bottom end. Yep. It is so funny. I literally just sent that text like 10 minutes ago being like, I think we got to split us up, man. I think we got to spread the wealth. You got to spread the wealth is what I've learned. And you want, I don't know what format you're playing, but best ball from our team's perspective on the 12 was really easy to pair up because, I mean, who cares, right? They're all good players. They're out there. We had the top 12 guys in the, in the world on our side. And as far as Americans on the world ranking, so can you really, how much difference is number six and number 12 in the right. world is so slim. It doesn't really matter. So in my opinion, we, we, uh, we tried to make the hay on the alternate shot, and then we show up and get our ass kicked on Friday. So it was, I know we <laughs> talked twice as much about alternate shot as best ball, and then we go 0 and 5. And so that was when, you know, Jim did really shine as a captain, was like, dude, we're not panicking. We did all That's this great. work. We have the right group out there. Sounds like you've really bought into the percentiles and the stats. I'm surprised to hear that from you. Is that, is that you learn just doing these team events? It's like, that doesn't seem like you. It seems like you're kind of a called as you see it, but you're going with the stats now. Dude, I was so like laughable at those stat guys, but after watching what they did, like while we're playing, you know, they're sending us texts, updates of who's playing better, who's doing this, who's doing what. And then what I was most impressed with is we walked in Saturday night. We basically had 30 minutes to go to single matches. And while I walked in the team room, they already had a 12 man lineup, one through 12 of how they saw our guys going. And then a 12 man lineup of how they saw their guys going. And basically, they nailed five out of the top six for them. And I was Ow. like, how do they do that? Like, literally, Damn. they don't know anything about what those guys are talking about. And they could just, through the stats and the way they had sent guys out the first four matches, they knew how they were going to go. Crazy. Damn. Stats That's... in professional sports blow my mind because it really shows how consistent you guys are. 
because <clears throat> without that consistency, the stats would mean nothing, right? Correct. Like, like they're assuming that you're going to do something, and then more often than not, you guys yeah. are doing that, which is nuts to me. But you, they, you the throw cool stats for me, Riggs uh, and Trent, it's going to yeah, look the, like a fucking Tetris board. I don't even know what it, <laughs> it wouldn't even look, look like, like the worst scout in the history of the event. <laughs> So the cool thing about our guys were when we would come back and they would present the data from the round, you know, we would comment back. Like Brian Harmon was minus 2.7 chipping after one of the alternate shot matches. And I'm like, well, dude, Max plugged him in the bunker on 16, couldn't get out. He hit him long left on a hole where he could not hit the green with a chip. That's automatic minus two strokes gain. And they're like, that's great. That's why we're, we have you guys because we, we don't know that. So right. we can add that into the data. We're just showing you the data. And I'm like, well, that's a, you know, and they and they were all in on that. And that's like, they're like, this is when it works best is when you guys are the eyes, we're the nerd math and it works together. You need both. You do need both. You need yeah, both. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you could just be in a situation where you can't make it up and down. And then like, like, like you're saying that, that wouldn't show in a, in a, in a data point. From a data point, if you're five yards off the green and don't hit the green, you're going to lose a full stroke. <laughs> yeah right. right right and you and that might have been an amazing shot to get it right. just on the fringe on the other right. side <laughs> right yeah that's a good point about all that yeah it's it's always addressing to me after these two because it's it's he, talking with with you about it it's like the narrative out there is just well of course the u.s won it was automatic it was inevitable there's no way that they weren't just going to win but you're clearly they're like no things had to be done we had to be prepared we had to have all the data correct. We had to have our guys predicting like fucking lunatics exactly what the other team's lineup is going to be on Sunday for us to get this victory. So I feel like being up there and trying to convey to people how awesome I thought the event was as a whole and how if you can just remove the fact that it's 13 to 1 or whatever it is all time US, that it really does feel more intense and closer than fucking 13 to one all time dude if you were there i mean i know you were there we hung out a little bit but you would never ever go to that event and think that the americans are by and far the favorites especially on the way ground i mean the whole time i'm like god dang these people are coming after us hard the internationals are playing their butts off and even on sunday you know we look up there at the board at one point and there's seven international flags and i'm like oh shit you know things need to we need to turn some shit around here because it's getting really tight and, you know, we end up winning by seven, but I don't think it was ever that big of a blowout, the whole whole match sessions. You know, Friday, or Thursday, we win three matches, one up. Like, that, that can flip pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, and so that could have been a two and three or three and two session and changed the whole dynamic of the matches quickly. How was the, um, how was the Sunday night hang? I was just on the show with Smiley this morning. I was trying to do it last night, but it wouldn't work. Um, and I was like, you know, the hardest part of this, President's Cup for me was you got everybody fired up to go to the course and you got to get on a bus for 45 minutes and go to the course. Oh. And then afterwards, everybody's pumped or tired each night and got to ride a bus 45 minutes. So on Sunday night, you know, we started partying pretty good at the course and the team room had, and they're like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, well, the bus ride is going to kill the vibe of the party, man. This is going to suck. You know, everybody's got to sit down in a bus. And I'm telling you, that bus ride was lit. I mean, we basically had a <laughs> DJ at the front. We had the strobe lights going, and each person got to pick a song and rap it going down the aisle. And we ended it, or, or sing it. It wouldn't have to be rap. But my favorite part was um, at the very end, they're like, all right, Cap, you're up. And Jim Fury grabs the mic, calls out Eminem, lose yourself, throws <laughs> his hood up, and just basically gritties down the aisle and high fives everybody and then says, fuck yeah, let's go. And we walk off the bus and go right to the party. Oh my god! Incredible. Oh, that's I, great. What's I need? To, I almost need to know what songs guys played. Oh, there was all kinds of shit. Uh, I saw has had the one that I've never heard of in my life. Have y'all had uh something from the Lonely Boys? Something about a motherfucking boat? Something like I'm on that? A boat. <laughs> on a boat. Yeah. On a boat. Yeah, I never heard that song, but damn, that was funny as hell. I was dying <laughs> laughing. That's a good. That's a good song. That's that's funny. That's fucking great. God. What a scene that must have been. And then you guys get together. I feel like both teams kind of party together, it feels like, afterwards. Well, you know, the internationals always say they have a better party than us, but it's kind of like a hoax at this point where they, like, want us to come over there so they can get pictures with our players. So I was just, <laughs> I'd call total BS on that deal. Uh, so we walked in there for, like, eight minutes, and this guy, he's like, kids, let's get out of here. Our party's more fun. So we went back. I think some of our guys stayed over there, but it's totally, 
totally interchangeable by by 11 o'clock 12 o'clock nobody gives a shit anymore and everybody's just like wherever they're getting the drunker i'm gonna be so mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. it's it's Hell a great yeah. time man we had a mag i mean the biggest beer pong game you've ever seen going in our room and scotty sheffler was the judge and it was the funniest shit i've ever seen i don't know if y'all ever seen scotty like in person and like how big he is like when he did that thing to tom kim on that on that green i was like i'm never fucking with scotty sheffler again like he yeah. could kill me right and then him sitting up there in this chair over this beer pong table. And then whoever had the advantage, he would cheat the other way to make it more even. It was funny as shit. Like, no, nah, elbow, elbow over. And everybody was getting so mad at him. But then everybody was like, well, what am I going to do? Fight Cody <laughs> Scheffler? I'm not, I'm not touching him. So I was the perfect judge for the whole night. And uh, we'd have like six-man beer pong games going. And I, I don't know when the last time y'all played beer pong. But, man, they had some new rules I've never heard of. Oh, I mean, beer pong. Uh, yeah, everyone's got their own version of it with like racks and and heating up and on fire. And How about and island, you heard of island? Island, no, you yeah. Can, yeah. You hit yeah, you hit I, an island cup, you get two. Yeah, I didn't know that one. I, they called island on me and ripped it. Like I had one to go, and then all of a sudden they had zero. I was like, yeah. what happened here? It's a cup that's not touching any other cup. Yeah, I got. I it. figured it out, but I was like, yeah. what the hell are you doing? You can't take two of my cups for one mate. No, well, Scotty sounds like a good time. He hasn't answered my text in like three years ever since he's been number one in the world. So it's just, you know, I've been texting him. I, I congratulated him on, on a master's, on having he's a He's not baby. a good texter. No, I'm I'm noticing that. You know, I miss him. I miss him a lot. But it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so can you kind of walk us through, and I know you've answered this and I've, we've seen the quotes, but the Tom, Kim, Scotty, that whole deal? Because that, that brought a lot of juice. I know we're, we're going to stop using that word on this podcast, but mm -hmm. and a lot of fire to the broadcast. That got people going. I was just wondering like, what your perspective on the whole thing was. Well, I was standing on the fringe, like 20 feet from the hole. Um, and it was hilarious because Stuart Sink was in the group ahead, and we're not allowed to give advice on the putting green unless we tell them before their ball's there. So Sk Stuart's like, hey, kids, everybody hit it long of the pin on seven, and they all under Reddit missed the putts left. If you can, tell them. And so I hear it, but we've already hit, so I can't tell him. So we get up there, and I'm standing with Russell, and Tom's about to putt, and I'm like, he's going to miss it left because everybody is. And sure enough, his ball's breaking to miss left and, like, hits something and goes back in the middle of the hole, and Tom goes running around the green. It was so loud, I didn't even hear I couldn't even hear what Tom exactly said. And then Scotty stands over his putt, and I'm like, well, hopefully he somehow makes it too, and... I'm telling you, this ball is like two feet from the hole, and Scotty's already turned his back to the hole and does this like this, like this. And I'm like, holy shit, look how big he is. <laughs> and he looks straight at Tom and goes, what did you say? <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, this has just made a big turn, a big turn. These matches yep. have really turned. And then, obviously, the eighth hole, you know, I thought it was Bush Lee, but Camilo went and told his guys to leave the green. And... Afterwards, once cooler heads prevailed, two days later, Camila and I talked, and he was like, dude, I'm just going to be honest with you. When I saw Scotty do that, I feared a little bit for my guys. Like, that was the scariest looking Scotty Scheffler <laughs> I've ever seen. So I just didn't want him to make another putt and something go awry. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll take your word for it, but I still thought it was bullshit. And I was like, you think Scotty's going to, like, punch your guys out here? Beat the, the shit out of Tom Kim. I saw, on the green. I saw <laughs> danger in his eyes. I'm pretty sure we're not going to do that. He's got a darkness inside of him. He needs some walking around. It looked, it looked like his demon came out of him, man. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen a replay, but damn, it was. I was like, holy shit. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it definitely is Bush League, but do, like, if you're getting screamed at, like, don't you think, like, if you're on the other side of that, you need to come up with something? You got, I, I know that's like against like the rules of golf, like the unspoken rules, but like, you got to come up with something if you're in that position. You can't, you can't just dude, roll over. If, if the players by themselves would have walked off and gone, right. and see, I would never have said a word. Right. But for them to make that butt and then standing on the fringe and an assistant captain, not even the fucking captain runs up to the green grabs them and says come yeah, on crazy. guys come on guys and scurries them off to the yeah. next green i'm like camilo it's not about us right like the least valuable person here is me and you right it's about the captains their wives who do have done 18 months of prep and the fucking players let the players play and i'm all for gamesmanship i want you to fuck with them as much as possible but well i'm never going to get involved and tell my guys something to do so i later right. in that match Scotty and Russ had to pee and they're like, I'm walking from nine to 10. And I'm like, they're like, kids, where's the bathroom? I'm like, dude, I have no idea. So I went scurrying around 
found some obscure bathroom walking to 10 and it was open to the public. So I kind of held the public back, let them go. Probably took us five minutes to get to the tent T, right? So we walk up and they both already hit. And I thought that was Bush League, right? Like, well, where'd they go? No, we didn't. Y'all couldn't wait for us to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So fast forward to 14, Scotty makes a birdie. We go, we take a one up lead and we go to 15 and they slow play us on 14 green. So they, they're back there hitting putts and whatever they're doing. And you can tell they're slow playing this. And so Scotty's got it teed up. And I'm going, Scotty, we're not hitting until they're on the tee. And he goes, yeah, I got you, Cap. So I bet we stand there for three minutes. And it's, he's just standing there waiting. And as soon as one of their bags touches the ground, he goes, hey, kids, we good now? And I'm like, yes, sir, <laughs> fire away. <laughs> awesome. That's yeah, so good. that shit was heated out there, man. I love that. That's great, though. We talked about it a lot in the recap. Like, that was... You know, the President's Cup, uh, uh, people have their own, you know, thoughts about it compared to Ryder Cup, whatever you, might, whatever you want it to be. I, I love when it's just mano y mano. It's, it's competition. We don't get that too often in the game of golf. And you guys really, we're not going to keep saying the word juice, but you guys brought the juice. And you need that, man. Like, you guys felt it. It was, it, it was in there, man. Your competitive juices were flying. You wanted to kill the other team. That's what it's all about. doesn't matter what the projections were, what you were supposed to do. When you're out there teeing that ball up, it's all about competition. And that's, it, came out, it came out immediately. And I love that. I think that goes to a point that, you know, I've only been all three presidents cup. That was my third as a captain. And, and, but I've been intimately involved with the teams, you know, even the ones I didn't make. I was close to being picked and, and knew it. But I hear this all the time. But in, afterwards, I talking to Brittany on the way home, I'm like, that was the coolest group of dudes and wives combined as far as a bond because there was no drama man like nobody gave a shit everybody came together we had a few leaders on the team that kind of corralled the guys together in, in certain meetings that the captains didn't have to call which is what you always want and the wives were so cool about it like normally you got some wife that doesn't want to show up to the course or wants to go shopping or i'm not i'm not gonna wear that outfit like i didn't hear any of that all week and i thought you know when you get a team that bonds like that it's pretty easy to bring the juice that's great that's great. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I'm glad you're able to kind of talk about some of that heated stuff because it, it was trying to explain at the last show of like being there. It doesn't all come through on TV. And when right. you're there, and you hear everything that those fans are saying in between every shot those guys hit and they're getting they're getting chirped. They're getting was that the day you, know, you were there, Riggs? Was that Thursday it, or were you there Friday? I was there Thursday and Friday. Yeah, so when you walked like, down the 15th hole with me, that's when that was when I told Scotty not to hit right after I saw you on the 15, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you could and, feel it, right? I mean, like, yep. you knew I was amped up. You knew they were amped up. Like, I, I talked to you for, like, two or three minutes. And I'm like, dude, I got to go. I'll see you up I gotta here. I got to go. Yeah. And then so, you're getting in there with Russ and all those guys. Yeah, it was just, it was cool as shit. It was fun. I'm glad we fucking won and, like, stomped on their throats at the end. Uh, yeah, it was a great event. Get ready for game day with the latest addition to the Barstool Sports rival collection, Barstool College. Shady Rays has partnered with Barstool Sports, that's us, to bring you, that is you the listener, a new lineup of premium polarized shades that are perfect for showing off your team pride. The Barstool College collection features bold colorways inspired by some of the biggest names in college sports, ensuring you'll find the perfect pair to rep your team. Frankie's got it right there. He's got the uh, the little silk um yeah because bagging. my actual shady or, rays are in my car i talked about that the other day they're just in my car and every time i get in my car i toss them on but i do have the holder here in my office because it's so cool and it's and i play with it and like i don't know my, it feels good on my fingers but shady rays man great color scheme Riggs is rocking them right now you got to protect your eyeballs you only get one shot at this thing you only get one set and you got to protect them and you got to look good while doing them you know find your color ways find your your college um colors make Make your combinations, whether it's yellow and blue, blue and black, whatever. Go check out the website. they got a million of them. So really, really fun. Uh, plus, Shady Rays has hassle-free returns and exchanges. You can shop with confidence, elevate your game day, look with the Barstool College collection. Um, and they got a bunch of other great stuff on there as well. I'm not wearing the college collection right now. I'm wearing just one of my pairs that I've had for a couple of years now that I ordered a long time ago because they're great. You can get some great ones by heading to ShadyRays.com and use the code 4 F-O-R-E, to get 35% off polarized sunglasses. See for yourself why over 300,000 people have rated these shades five stars. That is code four at ShadyRays.com for 35% off.
What's up with you, kids? I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, what's your you I'm, grinding uh, right now? I'm down here practicing. I'm going to play the next two weeks in Utah and Vegas. Uh, see if I can get some good good mojo. I learned a lot from Scotty Scheffler. I think if I just slide my right foot back and push my left foot <laughs> forward and transition, I can hit it straight as he does. That's so right. I'm going to work on that today. If I tear the ground up really good, I think it'll go straight. Uh, <laughs> nah, man, I'm uh, I'm playing the five the next five events on tour this year. Obviously, I wasn't playing this week because I had my big foundation music festival, but it got canceled because of Hurricane mm-hmm. Helene. And uh, so I've been working through that the last two days, trying to figure out all those cancellation deals. And now I'm about to practice some golf for the next four days. Fly out Monday to Utah. Canceled the event. That's, That's we love that event. We came. We did that event. Yeah, it's uh, this year. You know, I don't know if you've seen, but Aiken got destroyed, devastated from that hurricane. Like my house doesn't have power. That's why I'm down here at Kiowa. Uh, they don't know when it's going to come back, and there's just no way to put on a show of fifteen hundred, two thousand people from a music festival with all these people still trying to recover and all these relief efforts going on. So we're going to do a free show Saturday night, and my my foundation started a donate relief fund. Uh, just to give back to the community and Jojo Hermain and Sam Holt from Widespread Panic are coming to play in downtown Aiken for free Saturday awesome. night. And uh, we'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can uh, generate some money to give those to uh, that. You know, we've got friends that lost their houses and um, just cars and things that got destroyed that, you know, terrible when you're trying to fight fight down insurance money. So hopefully we can raise enough to give some help to people. Damn. Jeez. Yeah, devastating stuff. That's great, though. Free, free show it'll raise spirits raise a lot of money that's good yeah we were we were trying to pull the festival off man and because we felt like by saturday people would need something to do but you know once we started once we the product that we were expecting was compromised because from a standpoint of we wouldn't have the volunteers we wouldn't have the capabilities of uh employees without pulling them away from their houses with no power we felt like yeah. no way we could move forward and it would probably be bad optics us out there running generators and people were without power still so yeah. um it was the right choice but it was a hard choice i really wanted to still try to pull it off but it, it wasn't going to be the the product that we expected to have what what's like kevin kisner's motivation for playing golf right now i feel like a professional golfer goes through different phases where it's like you're trying to make it then you're trying to secure enough money and like and accolades to be set for the rest of your life and now you're on this other you've already done all that right i mean i would assume yeah, kevin yeah, kisner's yeah. pretty damn good the Kisner family is in a good spot. We've seen the house. We've seen the family. You guys are looking good. Uh, at this point, like you're playing five of the next six weeks, whatever it might be. Like that's a grind. Like what is, what are you actually trying to accomplish in this next phase of your golf game? Well, I'm really pissed off with the way the last two years went. So I want to flip that script and, and show that to myself and nobody else and my kids, like that ain't how I'm going out. I'm not going out right. shooting 75 and missing cuts every week and, uh, I'm putting enough work in that, you know, all I need is just to get a little confidence in some tournaments. I really thought like, you know, Minnesota, I played well and then I only had one more tournament at Greensboro and, uh, kind of a crazy weather impacted golf tournament. And then I had to take six weeks off. So if I can get on a roll of playing better, uh, Minnesota was the first time in, in a year and a half that I felt like I could hit a, you know, stand over a shot and hit it with something on the line. So that was really, really good. Um, uh, hopefully that confidence comes back and, all I want to do is prove to myself that, you know, that ain't the way I'm going out where I felt dejected. I didn't want to hit a shot anymore. Didn't even want to go to golf tournaments because I was hitting it so bad. And uh, hopefully, you know, get that rolling again. And, and uh, who cares what happens? I don't care if I ever win a tournament again or whatever, but I'm going to prove to myself that I'm not going out like that. I love that. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Really Fuck no one yeah. else to, there's nothing else to do other than that. You know what I mean? Correct. Like, and if I would have won my last tournament and said I'm out, then it would have been great. But, you know, I'm not going to go out with me feeling dejected. So I'm going to hold my head high, going to keep grinding. And uh, if I, uh, I'm i 50th in career money. So I, if I don't win one this fall, if I don't get 125, I stay in the top 50. I can use a one-time exemption and be fully exempt next next year on tour. Okay. We're going to, we're gonna, this, this clip of you talking about how like you're going to go back on the grind and you feel like you have a little more in you and you're going to prove it to yourself when you win a major. We're going to play this and it's going to be so fucking awesome. Like the Kevin Let's Kisner go. story. This is, is going to be the beginning of the documentary right here. Oh, you let's know? go. Let's oh, do I it. I fucking love it. I love it. British Open with your 1776 hat. That's what you're going to have to be yeah. the British Open. The rest of them are too long anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about that for years. I think one of the first times we had you on, we went through the major list and you were like, no chance, no chance, no chance. That was, 
it was yeah. unbelievable but yeah that's great uh and i don't know if y'all know this but i'm turning 41 so there are not many major champs anymore at 41 so we gotta get over there at british open where the ground's hard uh-huh. i mean uh-huh phil 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 won at 50 didn't he yeah phil won kiowa at 50 yeah but he uh he plays a little different game than I do. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. Uh, I, you got that fire in you. You know, dude, you know who's got the fire in him? That and I used to give him a lot of shit. And I don't know if you saw this, but we talked to uh Brian Harmon on the show. And he was fuck he was a fucking man. He's an angry little motherfucker, isn't he? <laughs> he is, yeah. <laughs> he is. That's why he's my boy, man. He was great. I love him. How else could you be five seven, 150 pounds and, and win on a British Open? I mean, you better be angry at the fucking world. Dude, you know what I just saw that I I wish I would have brought it up because I didn't see it. Did you ever see um, Norm McDonald like stood up for for him on yeah, Twitter? Have yeah. you ever seen this trend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norm no. McDonald one day tweeted out like, I don't know why people give you so much shit. You can hit the shit out of the ball for a little guy. You you can you can putt it better than anybody. Like I'm rooting for you to win a major one day, and it's probably going to be at Augusta. Like it was fucking. It was a crazy tweet, and he yep. was like, "Thanks, Norm. This is nuts." <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. It is true. He's like, I don't know why people stopped rooting for the underdog with me. And it's like, I, yeah, is that what Ryan said? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, why, <laughs> why, why is like a little guy coming to beat all the big guys? Not a cool story with me. I guess I'm just like hateable. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> He's the most fun guy ever too to hang out with. Like witty, smart, loves to hang out, loves to do cool shit. And uh, we need to get together and do something with him. Yeah, no, we got to do. Yeah. So, I know that's been. Yeah, there's around. been. There's been some kicking around of an alternate shot, Kiz Harmon against the uh, the scramble team here. Yeah, I'm in on that. As long as we wow. make y'all go kill an animal while we do it, like y'all got to kill a deer or we don't play, or y'all got to kill a hog. Yeah, was it earlier this year, or last year? Yeah. Uh, we went with Sam Burns to like his little like. Yeah, but that was like amateur hour. Like I know, but I shot, shot my first gun one time. I shot my first gun. That was yeah. my first. Uh, that's the first time I ever felt the 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 wrath of the it's world in clip. my hands. I want to see. You put the bullseye on a target and send it at a I'm line. I'm in. I'm in. I'm so in. Dude, if we can get I mean, between it's... the three of you, we could get three of us in a stand and somebody will kill a doe. I promise Somebody's you. Somebody's killing something. Dude, Come we on, we have man. to do that. Trent, I got you, dog. I'll put you right on the shit right there. Mom, All you got to do might... is pull the trigger. I think if mom I killed man. one, I think I might weep. I think I might weep and call my mom after it. But I mean, you know. Yeah, and then we send you all the meat and you eat for Christmas all venison jerky and venison oh, sausage. So good. Like, Turns to Joe Rogan. Man, this is good. Fuck yeah. Fuck man. Uh, good last stuff. thing, kids, how are you liking the broadcasting? You still going to broadcast? I have no no uh, tournaments on the schedule for him. We were supposed to talk here in a couple of weeks, but uh, I don't really know what their plan is for that. But as long as I stay in the top 50, I've already told them I will play. Uh, fully exempt next year obviously that wouldn't be exempt any majors or or the players unless i play well so may help them out at a couple of those if i'm playing if not we'll see what happens after sea island okay i okay. think you're great on it you're I mean, great honestly, at it. i appreciate personality it was built for it we need to uh innovate a little bit if i'm ever down the road take that gig full time i'd like to uh keep pushing the envelope to make it trendier push the push the limits a little bit yep and don't wear a damn coat and tie ever again. No. Yeah. That's not you. Well, it's not. I don't. never seen a golfer play golf in a coat and tie. I don't know. Some of those clips from back in the day. Old Tom Morris was wearing, like, fucking sheepskin. <laughs> but is the <laughs> coat and tie really relating to the new modern no. golfer that wears their hat backwards and their shirt untucked and plays music? And Well, apparently the word on Twitter is that even if you take carts, it, you're, you're disrespecting the game. That's what I see. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What the fuck's his name? I wouldn't Mike, even Mike, play golf if I couldn't take a car. Mike Clayton, uh, we don't have to bring kids into this hate. I don't want. I don't want no, to no, attach no. you to any of our. Uh, I told him. I mean, I think he's the fucking biggest douchebag on Twitter. This guy <laughs> basically said he took a picture of guys twenty three years old. Can you read the tweet, Riggs? I'll read. It the was tweet. like read the tweet. One of, he took a picture guy, of four guys on a tee box with two golf carts, and this is what he wrote: One of golf's great crimes, an easily walkable course, plus four under twenty five year olds in carts, makes me want to throw up. <laughs> Who is this guy? I don't uh, know, man. We don't really put know. him in a home, dude. He's got me and That's Frankie blocked. Do. He's some. some is he like an actual person? That I mean, how else did you find this tweet? He obviously has some followers. He's or got something. twenty thousand followers. He's from. Looks like he's Australian. I don't know what he does. He's like an Australian personality, car, course architect person. I don't really know either. Sounds like he just rides around being a douche. <laughs> he's got That's me right. blocked, so I can't see him. So I, don't <laughs> I can't know. either. 
He's I really got even... me rattled on this fucking Wednesday morning, though. My blood's boiling. <laughs> we got Frankie fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, Shit. have you knocked Mama up yet? Sorry? Have you knocked Mama up yet? No. Nope. No? No. Nope. You're just practicing still? Still, still practicing. All right, good. Let me know when you let one marinate. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I got you. I'll teach you all the ropes of being a dad. Last night, I had to hold my three-year-old like this and say, stop crying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Teach me the ropes after shooting the ropes. Yep. Boom. Oh, nice. All right, I'm gonna go get to practicing, man. Y'all have a great day. I appreciate you having me on. No, right, brother. Right, we appreciate kids. you coming, man. On. We yeah, appreciate man. you. Anytime it's good catching up with Riggs. Make sure Riggs tells you what happened in his hotel room in Montreal the first night on the pod. All right. That's gonna be the next topic. <laughs> all right. Thank you, See kids. You, boys. <laughs> Bye, kids. kids. Uh, we got banged up in Montreal. That's pretty much what happened. Like real you, banged kids? up in Montreal. No, Kiz was Kiz was like stuck with the uh, team the whole time, but the crew that we went out with, and we were just drinking everything. And I mean, I might have woken up at like noon or something on Ooh. in uh, in the hotel room in Montreal, um, which I was like three hours ahead from Arizona, and it was just it was just a, a disaster. Is pretty much what it was in that room. <laughs> These things happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Montreal's fun time. I kind of said that in the last show, really fun time. Man, I really love that guy. He's just the best. Yeah, that was great. Great to hear from him. Yeah. It's nice that he's just back. Like, I, he took his time, became a wilderness man. Remember when he was growing that beard? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mountain man. And now he's just back to just old kids. He's got a swagger back a little bit. It's just, it'll be nice to see if it translates to the golf course. I think the President's Cup will be a nice igniting of his fire. You know, he's, he walked with all the guys at a high level. They're all playing really, really good golf. He's captaining them. He's walking with Scotty Scheffler. He's seeing how they're they're getting it done. I just think that's gonna like reignite him a little bit. Well like, he even said he's like I learned going. something from Scotty Scheffler. He didn't say he didn't specify what, but like I think I think you're right. Like just being in the mix, being around the guys, like that is gonna that'll make you wanna be better and make you want to play better. So I hope it happens because, you know, we're rooting for him. It's nice to hear that too because I I imagine you guys get the same thing at the Barstool Classics with all your buddies. It's like, how come Kids isn't just full time on the coverage? Why is he not in the bro? And it's like, dude, this guy's still got that fire in there. He wants For to sure. play golf, wants to prove it to himself. Said he wants to watch, you know, he wants his kids to be able to watch him go out on a high note, compete again at the highest level. So let's fucking go, Kids. That kind of got me juiced up. Dude, Tiger said the same thing, remember? He was like, I. My kids know who I am, but they don't they don't know. Like I want to show them that I can I'm this guy. Like you can go on YouTube and see all the clips, but like I want them to grow up and they now have memories and they can see me be what I've always been. So I, I totally get that. I really do. This episode is presented by Kraken, one of the longest standing and most secure crypto platforms in the world crypto I feel like i hear crypto everywhere for the last several years if you're not figuring out into the crypto game at this point you're probably well you're probably regretting it you probably should get involved and kraken is going to be the best way to do it crypto is very popular boys well and also the secure part i think is the most important i know people are like i got to keep my crypto secure you got to have the right platform so you don't lose it you know you just got to have your all your crypto keep it secure it sounds like kraken is going to do that for you so if you do get in the crypto world, which like you're saying, a lot of people are, and that seems to be the future, you have to make sure it is secure and Kraken is going to help you do that. Kraken is your guide to financial freedom, Trent, offering safe and simple access to crypto for all, trusted by over 13 million individuals, traders, and institutions around the world. Kraken offers professional 24-7, 365 client support, along with one of the fastest, most uh, performant trading platforms available kraken leads with transparency and trust which is crucial in this space securing client funds nfts and private uh, privacy through top-notch security not investment advice crypto trading involves risk of loss and is offered to u.s customers excluding washington new york and maine credit to me for knowing those abbreviations through payward interactive incorporated view legal disclosures at kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures go to kraken.com slash barstool and see what crypto can be. Let's do a little closest to, you know? Let's, oh, shit. Uh, let's, let's finish this thing out with some closest to. We had kids on the show. We had a nice chat about Mike Clayton. We've had a good, we got Frankie all fired up on this, on this Thursday show. 
Let's do some closest two here. I think Frankie's got him. We got an update, Bush? No gravy. Gravy train. No gravy. Just wait, you know? I saw that guy tweet a bunch of gravy. You got to get you riled up. Yeah, you got you got to play into the bit That's a little good bit. good tweet, you know? man. That was a good tweet. <laughs> I saw Riggs reply to that. I love that. Uh, all right, what do we got? Okay, point scored by Team USA in Sunday singles at Presidents Cup. 7.5, Riggs and Trent, 7.5. Both get two points. Let's go. <laughs> um, number of 50-yard field goals or more made in week four, the NFL season, 19. Al, Al, or Trent and I both had 11. That's fucking insane. There were like, I think there were like five on Monday night. It was wild. Okay. Um, low temperature in Asasco, Italy on Sunday, 43 degrees. Trent had 43 degrees. Jesus. And then the fourth back, was the baby. coin flip that Frankie and I both got two points. That was amazing. Which was yeah. absurd. All right. Uh, what do we got for standings? Standings right now Trent, 60. Alex fifty one, Riggs forty five, Frankie thirty nine. That okay. sucks. Dan that slash sucks. Dylan forty three. He's dead. <laughs> Still more than you. All right, Frankie. All right, guys. So this is closest to the pin. Brought to you by Barstool Golf. Um, <laughs> yeah. New video coming out, by the way. I think it's today. Tom- I think it's today. New video coming out today. PGA Frisco. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to talk about this before we get into the closest to the pin. PJ Frisco, an amazing golf resort in Texas, only 30 minutes away from the Dallas airport. We talked about it at nauseum while we were there on a couple of podcasts ago, but this video is ready to rock. It's one of the best uh, challenges that we have done yet. Essentially, what we did was Trent, Riggs, and myself, we played our own balls, ball and hole. And if we were two over or better no i'm sorry if we were three over or worse as a group we had to take a shot of fireball on each so, hole on each hole yeah so major championship course this is their pga championship course it'd be there in not easy seven so if i made a double bogey these guys had to both par out to save us from taking a fireball shot we played 18 holes of golf that's the whole video is 18 holes it's an amazing people, video we show the whole entire there. golf course guessing it's great how many of those holes we had to do a shot on like before Think about you Trent Ryan, this video sam riggs bazoin and frankie borelli the third <laughs> had to be two under or two over or better on a golf hole combined to not take a shot of fireball whiskey this was at like 9 30 a.m in texas um yeah it's it's interesting it's an interesting video it got real Very interesting good. it was a great video it was a fun time there were some, some of the best moments, moments in four play history honestly some happened huge in that video. moments man yep um, so make sure you go watch that. That's going to be out on all four play platforms. My first question, I am going to big Cedar lodge. I have not looked at the weather. This is something I've been doing consciously. I have, I told everyone in my group chat, don't, don't fuck with the weather. It's the only thing that we cannot control. I've done everything. So without looking it up, no one's looked it up. What will the high be for Monday? When I step up to the T on Monday, October 6th, I believe it is. In Ridgedale, Missouri, Monday, we're playing Ozark National. And then Tuesday, we're playing Payne's Valley. Wednesday, October we're playing 7th. Buffalo Ridge. October 7th. October 7th. October okay. 7th, Monday. What, what is the high in Ridgedale? Now, I don't even know what Missouri is right now. Is it in the 60s? Is it in the 80s? I'm not sure what Ridgedale, Missouri is. I should probably look. I, After the show, I probably will look just to see what I have to pack. That's but right. I have not looked yet. It's a good idea. Yeah, I would tell your buddies, look so you can pack the right stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm in. I'm in. All right. Riggs, 81. Alex, oh. 77. Trent, 71. Frankie, 70. 81. That's a Missouri boy, so he knows. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> I haven't. I didn't look, but that's kind of my guess. It's pretty fucking hot there usually still. God. Strikeouts for Garrett Cole on Saturday. The New York Yankees game one ALDS versus TBD. We do not know who we are playing yet. So. Garrett Cole will be on the bump for the New York Yankees. First game of the playoffs. It's been a great season. Aaron Judge, an amazing, historically great season. Um, how are they? How is Garrett Cole? Is he going to show up? This is a huge game for the Yankees. Start off our, our postseason run. Um, how many strikeouts for Garrett Cole? Oh, did I not make mine invisible? All right. Strikeouts for Garrett Cole. Trent, six. Al- or Riggs, six. Alex, oh. five. Frankie, seven. 
Come on, Gary. Okay. Can't catch the trend on that New one. New York Jets are playing the Minnesota Vikings in London. You sound like you're from London. From London. They are playing on Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. How many passing yards were passing yards will Aaron Rodgers throw for? How does it make you feel watching Sam Darnold this year with Minnesota? It's unfortunate, but also I I take uh, solace, 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 a, a solace, solar, solar eclipse. You take solar power in what? <laughs> I take mm-hmm. solace in um, the fact that he 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 stunk baby dick in uh, <laughs> Carolina. Also, you know, yeah, true. He's been so good for Minnesota. I just think you know. Justin Jefferson's better than any weapon that he had. And he's just, he's great. Like he's, he's playing great. And I'm a big Sam Darnold fan. I think he's a fan of the show. He's a fan of Barstool. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, at times probably better than his buddy, Josh Allen, especially this year. So, what? I mean, at the end of, oh yeah. Sam Darnold's a better quarterback than, than what? Up until Josh the Allen Ravens this year, game, no? maybe. This year? Statistically. He's, he's a, I mean, Josh Allen played, had, like, he was having an it's, unbelievable. It's week five. Year. Josh Allen you, has like t- nine touchdowns. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, Sam Darnold is playing. Well, he's he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Yeah, one of. How many passing yards Aaron Rodgers? I haven't even written it down yet. I actually don't know the stats behind either of those guys. I'm just trying to get you going. <laughs> he was. I mean, Bush couldn't even speak there. No, he almost. It's just the most Rashad absurd had, thing. He had like a historical life. four weeks. Right then, he just kind of. Yeah, he had a he had a bad game, but he's still very close to, if not leading the league in touchdowns. I think we're in there. All right, Riggs two twenty three. Mother Trent two fourteen, pretty close to lead the league touchdown. Alex two o five, Frankie two seventy five. All right, and the final question of closest to the pin: the Iowa Hawkeyes, our Iowa Hawkeyes, are going to the Big House. Oh, nope, boy. they're nope. going to Ohio State. They're going to Columbus. <laughs> they're not going <laughs> to Michigan. They're going to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> oh Jesus! They are playing the uh, Buckeyes, who are four and zero. Iowa is three and one. Big, big Big Ten matchup. How many points? Will Iowa Hawkeyes score in Columbus, Ohio, against the Ohio State University? They're scoring more this year, right, Trent? So this no. is a huge game, though. I want to quickly look at. I want to look on DraftKings and see what the line is. The line nine point five, I believe, is it is around. Is it not double digits? Twenty and a half, I think. I was going to say. <laughs> the last I looked, it was twenty and a half on DraftKings. Hold on, I'm I'm scrolling a little bit here. Oh, I was talking. I was talking about. Iowa's over. Yeah, Ohio State's 20-point favorites. Mizzou at Texas A&M this weekend. What's uh, Texas A&M ranked? 25th. Mizzou's number nine, but people think they suck because they had a couple dicey wins. All right. Riggs, 17. Frankie, four. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Four? What? No. You, get, you said 14. You, the, you said four. Sorry, pal. You're couple, at four. No. <laughs> like, God, they safeties. scored four, two safeties. 14. I four is a hilariously like <laughs> potentially possible guess for the Iowa. Hawkeyes. 14, obviously it's 14. You're in for four, pal. That's what it says in the chat. So no. Four. Yep. You could get closest to though. Three. Three's in play. Zero, you're gonna win. All right. Fine. You know Keep what I'm it saying? at four. This this <laughs> what you send in the group is bond. It's Five, word. Four. It, it's what it is. Fuck. Uh Trent 17, <laughs> Alex 14. What did Riggs guess? 17. God damn it, Riggs. God, I you and me just squashing each other, insane. man. What the fuck, man? Four. Which actually ends up working for me. But. That's crazy. Watch him score four, though. It's not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> just a couple safeties is crazy. Frankie's going to get two points on that one. Safety and a pick on a two-point conversion. Just, just two. Probably two safeties. <laughs> Dude, you want to talk about a safety? Um, the uh, Titans-Dolphins game was one of the worst beats I've ever seen in professional sports. Where that game was over, and the I Dolphins had the, had the, you had the over. I did, yeah. Oh my mm, god, that game was, was done. The mm. Dolphins had the ball. It's like, oh, they're just gonna get past the two minute warning. It's gonna go. They're gonna run it out. They end up giving the ball to Titans, who then, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. The Titans had the ball. They end up giving the ball to the Dolphins, who then they, it's a intentional grounding or something oh. in the end zone. So it's a safety. So that there's two points there, and then they have to punt it. And he goes to onside punt it, hits it out of the of the new zone, the kicking zone, receiving zone. So then, then the the Titans get the ball in basically the red zone, and you're like, oh, they're just gonna like kneel it out, but they keep giving it to Tony Pollard. Yep. And even on fourth down, fourth and third, they run the ball in the end zone. Oh, 
What are we doing to get an extra nine points out of this game out of nowhere? I was losing my mind. When they missed the two-point conversion, I was like, the over's dead. We're dead. so dead here. And then the safety, even after the safety, I was like, we're dead. dead. Because they're going to kick it down the field, and they're going to kneel, and it's over. And then, they're yeah, I don't understand the penalties. When they line that ball up at, like, the 15, oh. I almost shit my pants. I, I was but like, I was dead. It's a scrappy, still it's a scrappy to over, touchdown. Trent. Just a was, 37 and a half over hit in the last two seconds. Dude, and I was going against Tony Pollard in fantasy, and I had like a huge lead. And all of a sudden, it's like, this guy's scoring touchdowns now? <laughs> like, dude, I remember getting a text from my buddy Jeff. Uh, my name is Jeff. And he said that, oh, he's like, it's over. This game's over. That was with like five minutes left. And Pollard just ran for like 40 more yards after that. Speaking of Jeff and speaking of ship sticks real quick, my buddy Jeff, I had 13 people. I got 13 stakes over here. I had 13 people drop off golf clubs for ship sticks to come pick them up from my house. My buddy Jeff just brought his golf clubs and just with no travel bag and just oh. dropped them in my garage and just left because I wasn't home yesterday. He just, I, we came home and I saw just everyone's nice travel bag. And then there's just this old golf bag with all just the metal, just the woods and the driver and the, no, no head coverage. Just, just, just this on is your the problem concrete. now, buddy. He just <laughs> dropped them there. <laughs> and when, Jeff, when he did, he not see all the other bags, or he oh, just he, didn't, saw he paid them no mind. He saw them. He sent the text. He goes, he goes, you're gonna see something when you get home. Like you're, <laughs> there's gonna be a difference with my bag and the rest of them. Um, luckily, we had an extra one for him, but it's like that was very, very funny. Like oh, you just, so you funny. gotta, you gotta, I sent that an itinerary wrote travel bag. I was very specific. I'm like, you guys can put all your hoodies and stuff in there. Like put all your extras, your shoes. He was just like, here's my, I'm going on a golf trip. I have golf clubs. You're going to bring them there. And I'm just going to drop them here. I, I wish I was there for the clank that it made. Just <laughs> <laughs> these shoes are wonderful. I just <laughs> take them with me. Fall is officially here, and the temperatures are dropping quickly. We're going to talk here about the all-course line, which you can find at petermillar.com slash foreplay. At the very beginning of this show, we talked about how they're at the Dunhill Links. Peter Millar has a presence out there. Frankie complimented this uh, delightful fall jacket that I'm wearing right now that's got the crown on the chest. I had a baby blue one on on the last show that we did, which I wore all around that place up at Royal Montreal. and got compliment after compliment. But I said at the beginning, these guys saw Peter Millar, I think, on their Instagram account, just posted like a roll, basically, of each one of the guys geared up for the Dunhill Lynx dinner the other night, wearing all kinds of different Peter Millar jackets, sweaters, pants, shoes, and they just looked fantastic out there. It's an amazing brand. It's an amazing brand. I, uh, I went to a pretty high-end golf uh, foundation charity event yesterday yeah, and felt like i was the best dressed one there because Fell the ball Millar. yeah just walking around was just a pep in my step like i just knew that i had the stuff it's high quality it's classy it looks great everyone knows the logo now they're present it's very prominent on the chest with a crown um peter millar man yeah the fall stuff i'm kind of keeping it close to the chest the next time we do film I want to be showing you guys a couple of these sweater vests that they, they, they got me. They got me a couple of vests. They got me a couple of over uh, crew neck sweaters, the V-necks, mm. um, a lavender color. You guys aren't going to believe it the next mm. time you see me. Yeah, like a nice lavender. Really good. Uh, be sure to check out the all-course outerwear and the rest of Peter Millar's line at petermillar.com slash foreplay. Designed for easy, lightweight wear, the all-course features a windproof construction and water-resistant, perfect for drizzly days. They've got a vest, a jacket, full zip hoodie. I'm going to be showing this stuff all over social media as well. Plenty of warmth thanks to the loose fill insulation. Be sure to check it all out, the all-course outerwear, and the rest of Peter Millar's line at petermillar.com slash foreplay. I got to give out a shout-out to this golf event I played in yesterday, Sabonic, the Peconic Hockey Foundation, my boy Troy at Sabonic. Um, I actually played with a couple of guys that you've played with before, Riggs, the Potters, who oh, I yeah. think like own the Seattle Kraken Dustin now. Potter? Yep, Dustin Potter, an absolute gem of a human being, his father and his brother, and it was great. Awesome, awesome crew. I played with a guy, Mike, who also was um, uh, roommates with Xander and, and Xander's caddy 
in college golf. So it was great. We played a shamble. So having really good golfers in a shamble, you put me, you put us fucking, we were driving the greens um, at Sabonic and like we made a two for one at one point on the first hole. The place Amazing. went nuts. I mean, we made a hole in one. Um, so yeah, it was very fun. The Potters are great people. Uh, this foundation is great. Out east, there's no place, and you would like this, right? It's like there's nowhere to skate for these kids. Yeah. So if you live on the eastern part of Long Island, there is nothing. You, hockey is not an option. So Troy at Sabonic, he basically started this foundation to raise money. They have an amazing new rink out there, the Peconic Hockey Foundation. It's a bubble. It's got a nice sheet. Kevin Shattenkirk was playing um, in this event. He said that he brought his kids there. It's an amazing place. Now they're building Shad an outdoor deuces. rink. So, yeah, it's just it's it's cool. It's like they're, they're really showing like. He's raising enough money. Like now, there's a bunch of teams, and he makes the kids do community service to to be on the team. It's an amazing um, like youth uh, hockey program. So I really enjoyed being a part of it. Jerome Bettis was there. Fucking uh, Mark Messier was there. It was awesome. They raised Jerome a ton of money. Bettis. Yeah, Jerome Bettis was awesome, dude. Yeah. He's the man. That's he was the sick. Man. Bus. Yeah, the bus. One of the guys at my um, at my table won a. It, it was like a, it was his jersey and a helmet, like a an army edition of his, of the Pittsburgh Steelers helmet. And he signed it. And his dad, like is a huge Steelers fan and also a military man. So it's like, everything just came together. It's fucking awesome. Jerome Bettis is the man. Dude, as, as, I, a, uh, as a fatter, as a fatter kid who played football, I watched Jerome Bettis and he like, he was a running back and I was like, I can do anything. Yep. Anything is possible. If Jerome Bettis, and he looks, be he back. looks as young as he, like when he started, if you see, he has that like just young baby mm-hmm. face. Jerome Bettis. I, yeah. uh, I got a funny hockey related quick story. I had uh, Mike Commodore, Kami, who uh, a lot of Barcelona people know. He's been on Chicklets all the time and he's story after story. He's, he's great. He's a Scottsdale guy. And I'm trying to start skating a little bit more this winter when I'm home in Arizona. And I had hit him up because he skates like once a week with, you know, a bunch of like former coyotes and college players, or whatever. So I had hit him up about the schedule. I was like, I'd love to get out there and skate. You're skating. And in Kami fashion, man, he called me last week. He goes, Riggs, I don't mean any disrespect by this, but you can like skate, right? <laughs> and I was like, and I was oh, like, he had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I can like, I can skate. I think I'll be okay. He goes, okay, buddy. all right. I didn't mean anything by it. I just, I can't be bringing somebody out here who's like, he's like, you can pass and stuff, right? I was like, yeah, I'll be all right. Dude. He's like, okay. It was great. That is so funny. I mean, it everyone has that kind of like when you're bringing someone to a new thing, you, it's like you don't want to have to ask, but then you also don't want to be the guy that brings someone that has no idea what's going on. I totally understood. And he's that kind of guy. He's called me. He's like, hi, uh, I, got, I just got to ask you. You can skate, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, I can skate. One of my buddies did that to me on the golf course recently, like brought his friend and the, like the guy had never oh. played golf before in his life. It felt like like he was like swinging and missing. I'm like, why'd you, why'd you do this to this guy? Oh, you got to right. call him and be like, are you like able to golf at a place like you know what I mean? Like, are you able to do this? Right. Are, are right. you capable of getting the ball forward? Because like it's going to be an embarrassing, insane day out there, and it ended up being Forever. like be out there swinging and missing and not knowing anything. Suck. Bringing a driver to the green base, it's like, like you have no idea what's going. What are we doing out here? It's can't fucking have crazy. You got to shrink the game, like fucking Michael Clayton <laughs> right. says. We can't right. have this guy out here. That's you right. better be walking. Yeah. You better be Get walking on this golf there. course. Bro. No golf cart course. around. No golf crazy course. piece of shit. Um, right. Yeah. So shout out to those foundations. Shout out to that event. We won it, by the way. We went twenty something under. We went like twenty four under or twenty three under. Yeah, you guys dude. Won. The shamble. The best. We didn't have this. We had, we just played really well. We played lights high. Putt great. Um, a shamble. If you have one incredible golfer like a, a a plus two and then you got a bunch of 20s that are all getting strokes you know what i mean like yeah the fact that this guy can hit it that far and then if you have like yeah if you have like a, a tw- uh, if you have a plus two like a 10 and then like 225s you're gonna win a shamble True. all day long par threes you're basically yeah. doing a scramble because you're all hitting from the same spot every drive you're like an like 110 yards from the green and you're getting probably two pops sometimes like it was, it was, you can really go low out there in shambles. I love a shamble sure. format. It really does teach you how much driving the golf ball eliminates so many problems oh on the golf Oh my course. God, dude. We've done it where I've, where I've played Frankie's drives. I played Lurch's drives and my game is a million times better. Yeah. yeah. You just bypass all of the trouble. You just fly oh. over and past all of the issues out there. And then you're just like, oh. Even if I mess up from here, it's maybe a bogey. It's not a nightmare. I mean, I got four pops. I was a net six under because of what this guy was doing <laughs> off the tee. 
Well, I didn't like he like every par three birdied, and every par five we were like he put me in a position where I can get on in two. It was fucking crazy. Like hitting the ball three thirty into the wind. I'm like, what is happening out here? It's an easy God. game from there, man. Easier, easier. That would be sick. That would easier. be cool. What a, right. instead, it's just slapping it in the right rough and grinding yeah. from all day. Oh, okay, I'm two eleven out. The right rough, like I'll put it right set. in there. Oh, it's like I'll, I'll drop dimes the ball out okay, here. Okay, and it's like the difference. Like when I would go scoop up my ball and like hope no one saw. It, like yeah, all right. Like pick it up out of the rough. He was sixty yards ahead of me down the middle. And I'm like, oh, I probably would have gotten a par two from here. <laughs> Thinking to myself, yeah, I would have made a four. Meanwhile, I have like a fifty four degree into the green as opposed to a seven iron out of thick rough. Huge difference. Everything. It's everything. I'll drop dimes. I'll drop dimes into that right rough if you want me to. <laughs> Show me where Dude, you want it in the right rough. I'll put it. Soft down. little floaters out there. No problem, man. <laughs> I, I got that. God. All right. All right. All right. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Big thanks to Kiss, but thanks to all of our partners, to our guys behind the scenes. Thanks everybody listening. Have a lovely weekend. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. 